at what point are we bringing parents into this and, and sort of, I guess, illustrating some of the ideas that the athletes have come up with? Uh, from the very beginning, set the tone from the very start. Usually you have that parent meeting to kick off the season. And then in there, you can explain that, hey, the athletes are going to be the ones driving this process. If we're going to work with them, we're going to set the values or it'll be their values. We're going to set the goals for the season. Uh, I'll help guide them. And then right away, you're telling them, I'm, we're going to communicate. These are, these are our rules of engagement. This is the, the easiest way to communicate with me. These are the things that we can talk about. And oh, by the way, I'll communicate regularly with you. And so from day one, you've created that relationship with the parents. The, the problem that we typically have in the States here is that there is this us versus them mentality that occurs yeah. where, where coaches don't want to deal with parents and parents don't like the coaches. And so they stand on opposite sidelines and they never come together. And a lot of coaches won't interact with the parents. So you're already setting that defensive posture with them. So ours was always embrace the parents from the very beginning. That's the one thing the schools in the U.S. do really well is the teachers are constantly sending home, read to your kids at night. Here's mm -hmm. what we worked on this week. Talk to them about their hunks and chunks letters or talk to them about their vowel sounds and things like that. And so they're, they're, they're bringing the parents into the learning process. As a coach, if day one you have a conversation with the parents where you say, this is our process to work on together. I'm, I'm a professional just in, like you are in your role. So trust me as a professional, but we'll work together to create the best environment possible because it doesn't just stop at the field. It happens in the car rides. It happens yeah. at the kitchen table. These conversations and the reinforcement of the, of the culture and the values and actually of the, the skills being learned on the field happen all the time. So day one, if you're having that conversation with the parents, they have a role to play now. They feel like they're invited into the, the classroom. Yeah. Uh, I love it, Reid, and, and here's why. This is why I love this so much, uh, because when we flip the narrative on what it means to coach and we, we think to ourselves, what can I do in the time that I do spend with my athletes that's going to influence the time when they're not here, right? And by the way, uh, you might get three, four, five, depending on the level and the sport, hours a week with your athletes. Mm. So there's there's plenty of hours when they're not around and and who's the designer of those environments where kids spend it, almost half if not more of their time it's the parent uh and so so there's real opportunity in it um and and if we think about coaching in a different way then all of a sudden uh, we can do some really magical things mm. i totally agree with you i love it because that's like you can give parents talking points you get done with a game and you can talk about what went well and what you're going to work on in the coming week. And by the way, ask Johnny about X today. Like, why did we work on X during the game? And now instead of it in the car ride home, rehearsing every mistake they made, they're having a meaningful conversation where their kid is teaching them. And I, I absolutely love the idea of bringing them in. And, and you're right. They spend a lot more time around their kid than we do. So why aren't we working together on it? Mm. I, I love the idea. Um, I think that that car ride home is a big issue. I know there's a number of influencers in the space and experts in the space who have written about this. I, I love the analogy from John Hame, who's a Canadian sports psychologist, who's a former professional golfer himself. And uh, he sort of works in as a consultant and sports psychologist over there in a variety of sports. He talked about the minivan prison and the role that we can play as parents post game when at times kids might just want to decompress they might not want to talk about their performance and so going back to the coach perspective is i think there's a duty of care whether it's coaches or leaders within clubs and organizations to really drive that parent education piece so we're talking obviously about you know linking parents in and uh, making sure they're included, but ensuring that they are regularly um, in contact with us and understanding what we're trying to achieve so that they can then support those objectives for me is a massive one here. Um, have you guys got examples, I guess, of, um, I guess, a concerted strategy or a regular um, form of contact around this parent education piece? Go ahead, doctor. <laughs> uh, Dave, just just uh, state the question again. Like, what what exactly are we? Well, in terms of in terms of you know, we can bring people in, but in terms of driving that kind of education and, and consistently trying to keep people aware as to what we're trying to achieve. So, if I'm working with young players and they've got objectives in the game, 
to reduce that anxiety, I want those parents to know what those objectives are, right? We right. talked about that transparency. So, but for me, that's a, that's a constant education because at times it can melt away during the season when suddenly results might come into focus or performances might be questioned. And then it's back to the sort of same old conversations in the car, you know? So I guess the question is around how often do we need to be engaging? Reid talked, talked about bringing people in uh, regularly, but I think, I think there's, there's got to be that constant education. Any, any sort of thoughts on that? Yeah, so I, I go back to relationships uh, yeah. and because and there's a couple of questions in the chat around engaging disengaged parents. Uh, the first thing I would say is that's a huge challenge uh, because yeah. if, if, if parents aren't showing up in the space or if you're not you're having an opportunity to actually relate, then you can't build a relationship. And all good things come out of relationships. Uh, and so let me... Let me tell, uh, you know, how I think about this through a story. And, and it was at AUT Millennium when we were running our LTID, our long-term athlete development program, um, where our job was to bring kids in and give them an experience around uh, the physical and the mental sides of the game. So we had kids from all sorts of sports of all different levels, uh, all different shapes and sizes. And and what we, we came to understand as a group of coaches, a slightly different way of doing things um, that, increase the gap and i think about this gap between expectation and reality mm. so parents will always come with an expectation of what what they think they're going to see i mean and that again it's built through their experiences yeah and then when, when they see the reality if there's a big gap between that then that creates uncertainty and we all know that um, no one likes to feel uncertainty um, and and there's certain ways that that people human beings not just parents will will try and close that gap and so what we did was uh, we spent a lot of time sitting with our parents and, and we were lucky enough to be able to create the space we were, we were coaching as a team. And so, so I removed myself from the direct coaching of the kids and we set up a coffee group in the morning and invited the parents in. Uh, a lot of them were coming to watch regardless. And so mm. that was an opportunity to actually pull them into a group and to just share some of the things that they were seeing and and let them ask questions all in an attempt to reduce the gap between their expectations and the reality of what they were seeing uh, because we, there was a lot of uh, chaos in the environment um, kids were doing some some really different things around building movement skills and it just didn't look normal it didn't look like there was much learning happening and I think uh, in today's age uh, we are we're living in a world where outcomes have become the priority and, and there's pressure all around on all of us as parents mm. to, to want to see our kids progressing. Um, and when we don't see that happening, then um, we start to ask questions. And so really it's, I, I think the best way to approach it is, is actually to narrate what they're seeing and, and mm. try and help them to actually see it through a different set of eyes. Reid, anything to build on there? Yeah, two quick, two quick stories. One, I, I, because I started at such a young age, you know, I'm 18, 19 years old in college and I'm coaching teams, youth teams that I, I got into this habit of trying to justify my existence as a young kid coaching these. So I would, after every game, would cross the field and talk to the parents just to, in the beginning, just to prove that I was capable of, of doing this so that they trusted me. And then I, at one point, finally stopped and one parent reached out to me and said, hey, we actually like when you do that. Can you keep debriefing with us? And so that became a habit was always crossing that field and debriefing. Like, you, like, like, like Dr. Craig was saying, you know, the narrative is constantly happening, having this meaningful conversation. So I wasn't just talking to the kids. I was engaging the parents and I was narrating the game for them. This is what went down. This is what we worked on. We saw some things we worked on in practice this week. Next week we'll be working on this. And by the way, you know, like I said, talking mm -hmm. points. Um, the other thing is, is <laughs> we stumbled on it by accident, but we had this team, and I was working with another coach who was out of the English premier system. He was out of the academies. And mm -hmm. so he was raised completely different on the game than I was in a completely different environment. So we approached the game so very different. And because of that, the parents weren't sure who to listen to, how to follow, how to interact with us. And Mark, brilliant as he was, one day turns to us and says, you know, we're having a Saturday morning kick around with the, with the boys. He said, how about we invite the parents to play? So we had a pickup game. 
with a bunch of nine-year-olds and their parents. And some of them had played and some of them hadn't. And some of them just wanted to stand around and not really do much, which was fine. But what it did was while we were doing that, we were able to have meaningful conversations about, we just worked on that last week. Did you see that mm. movie did? And the one parent who would played soccer way back in high school said, I forgot how difficult this is. Like I've been so hard on my son because he couldn't do a particular skill. And then I forgot how difficult this is to do. And so it, not only were we able to do that every Saturday and have those conversations and keep the parents in the loop and engage them and give them a role to play, but then they gained a total respect for their kids and they, 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 they sat back and became fans rather than parents of their mm. kids games, which was really cool to see.